Welcome to the 2016 Pleasure Way model year. The 2016 Pleasure Way model year was a year of change for Pleasure Way. We adopted lithium ion batteries throughout our entire fleet. A lot of the appliances in our fleet are identical. However, some may vary from coach to coach. What we want to do in this orientation video is introduce you to all the appliances that are the same throughout the Pleasure Way fleet and the operation of those appliances. Please refer to your owner's manual that came with your vehicle so that you can understand where the location is and exactly how the appliance works in your particular model. The 2016 Pleasure Ways are equipped with the Girard Instantaneous Water Heater. This one features the GSWH-2 water heater. We also use the GSWH-1 water heater on previous models. The GSW-2 water heater has a swing away door. The swing away door opens very simply. All instructions and also your ratings for your water heater are listed on the back side of the door. To use this water heater, you would turn on your switch and leave that on for the full camping season. There is no need to turn that switch off until you are going to store your pleasure way. The reason you can leave it on is the only time that the water heater is active is when you have your on-demand system in the on position inside the vehicle and you are running hot water. To operate the Girard on-demand water heater system, you do have to have your propane switch or your propane valve turn to the open position so that the propane can fire and fire the water heater as water flows through the water heater. You will notice there is no drain on this water heater. That is because this is a tankless water heater and only the water that is going through the copper tubes is supplied inside the water heater. This water heater as well, you can run your RV antifreeze directly through your water heater for winter storage. We are going to look at the digital panel for the Girard water heater system and do a walkthrough on how the Girard water heater system works and what you are reading on your screen. In 2016, Girard introduced a new water heater with a digital display panel. The first 2016 models may have the older style Girard water heater with a dial control. This operates the same as the digital control, although it is a manual setting for the water temperature. To begin with, ensure that your propane is turned on and the switch in the outside Girard water heater compartment is turned on. Then inside the vehicle, turn on your water heater. You will notice it will pop up to 124 degrees. That's the maximum temperature it can be. You can adjust this with the arrows up and down to the maximum temperature that it will go to. Your Girard water heater will not engage unless there is water flow through the system. Built into the water heater is a trigger switch that once the water is flowing, the Girard system then will kick in to heat the water through the hot water system. Turn your tap all the way to hot and bring it to a medium flow rate. This point, water will be flowing through the water heater the water heater, the fan will come on and you will notice the flame symbol coming on and the flame will be heating. You will notice the heat is rising on your water heater as the water heats at that medium flow rate. You can check the temperature of your water at the tap system itself. What's indicated is that the fan is running on the water heater and that the flame is engaged. You're currently running at 101 degrees coming through the water heater system. To increase your temperature, slow down your flow, and this will bring up the temperature of the water going through the water heater. If you find the temperature is too warm, you can regulate your water heater by mixing a slight bit of cool water and increasing your flow just slightly. Please be aware that if you're turning on and off your water, the water in the system will have a chance to cool down before you turn it back on and so you will get temperature variance if you are turning your water tap off and on. Please be aware that the initial burst of warm water may be a little hotter than usual, then it will drop to cool and then with flow will come back to the regulated temperature. 
For your water heater, you can choose to be in the Fahrenheit scale or you can move to the Celsius scale. For 2016, all Plush Away models are equipped with two 100 amp hour LifePool 4 lithium ion batteries. These are eco iron batteries with a self management system built into each battery, which will not allow them to be overcharged. The eco iron batteries are a tremendous power source for the inside of your vehicle and the operation of your 12 volt system. They are very user friendly and they manage and regulate themselves. Our vehicles are equipped with a lithium charger that's specific to the batteries and they will charge up much quicker than your standard wet cells and they will sustain the power needed for your coach for a longer period of time than your conventional batteries. Your coach batteries are charged through three different sources. You are being charged from your solar panels on your roof, from your alternator on the vehicle, and also from your converter when either on 110 or generator power. The auxiliary batteries are below the sofa in the Plateau FL, TS, and Ascent units. They are also below the rear sofa in the Promaster Lexer, although they are below the floor under the rear sofa. In the Plateau XL, the batteries are located underneath the power sofa that is located underneath the Murphy bed. You will have to remove the drawers in the Plateau XL to access the batteries. They are in individual battery boxes. The lithium ion batteries self-manage themselves. It is recommended that you do not charge your lithium eco-ion batteries in temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. If temperatures reach this mark, you can simply turn off your red key disconnect. This will disconnect your solar panels and your alternator from charging your auxiliary batteries. At temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, you still will be able to use your batteries it is just recommended that you do not charge your batteries at these temperatures. The red key disconnect is located at the rear ottoman in all vehicles except for the Plateau XL. The red key disconnect for the Plateau XL is located directly behind the driver's seat behind the front right corner of the power sofa. Your batteries are located inside your coach. If your coach is warm inside, it is okay to charge your batteries even though the outside temperatures may be below freezing. The only vehicle where the batteries are located below floor is the Promaster Lexer. On this coach, it is not recommended to charge your batteries unless your exterior temperature is above freezing. To access your EcoION batteries, remove the magnetic cover Slip this out of the way. Turn your thumb latch locks and drop down your door. This reveals two lithium ion batteries. These are 100 amp hour batteries. If you would like to remove your batteries, remove the negative post first, then proceed to move and remove your positive posts making sure that you're covering your positive posts for protection so that they will not ground out on any metal inside the battery box. Then remove the metal brackets that hold the batteries into place and slide your lithium batteries out the face of the cabinet. People may want to do this in extreme cold weather situations for winter storage. Before removing your eco ion batteries, Ensure that the red key disconnect is in the off position and the kitchen end panel switch for your battery is in the off position. For storing your coach over the winter period, if you are not in extreme cold winter conditions, ensure your batteries are fully charged and your disconnects are in the off position. We are now at the back of the Promaster Lexer and I will show you where the batteries are and how to access your batteries. On the Promaster Lexer, you will find four screws in the corner of the cover. These batteries are mounted below the floor and are more susceptible to freezing than the batteries mounted inside the coach. Remove the four screws from the corner. You will notice in the handle in the middle of the battery cover, you can lift and pull the batteries out. You will have to slide it forward to get the cover out as the cover is tucked underneath the center seat belt. 
Once you have the battery cover removed, you now have access to your batteries that are vented and located below the floor. You will notice that all around the battery opening there is a seal. This battery is vented to the outside. The battery compartment lid should always be in place when the vehicle is in operation. Never travel with the battery lid off these batteries because you will have carbon monoxide coming from your exhaust coming into the vehicle through that opening. You will notice in your battery compartment the setup is very similar to that of the plateau and the ascent. However, the batteries are mounted vertically instead of horizontally. Before you place the lid back over the batteries, ensure there is no debris on the foam seal. When placing the lid back over the batteries, slide the end in towards yourself, pull it towards yourself, pushing firmly on the battery lid and pressing it into place. Now it is safe to re-secure your batteries by reinserting the four screws and tightening this lid back down. The ProMaster Lexer is the only vehicle in our fleet where the batteries are located outside the vehicle and exposed to outside elements. Be aware that even though it is warm inside your coach, the batteries are not warm in the battery compartment. Your coach is also equipped with a propane fill and bleeder valve. The bleeder valve should be open at the time when you're filling your tank. Your onboard propane tank is set to fill only to 80%. At that point, when you see fluid coming out of the vent line, that is 80%. However, the gauge inside the coach will indicate that your tank is at 100%. Our vehicles are also equipped with a quick connect regulated barbecue tea that comes off of the propane tank. This is a regulated T, and so if your appliance does have an additional regulator on it, it may not operate. To use your Quick Connect Barbecue T, ensure the lever is in the off position. This will be at 90 degrees to the Quick Connect end. Remove the yellow rubber cap. Ensure that there is no dirt or debris in the opening. Pull back on your insert, press your T in, and lock it into position. Now your barbecue T is connected. To turn on the gas flow, you will move the handle to be in line with the barbecue T. Now you will have flow of gas. You will not be able to remove your quick connect hose if the gas flow is in the on position. To release the quick connect hose, you must turn off the gas first, then pull back on the release and remove the hose. If the quick connect hose is not inserted into the flange and the valve happens to be turned on, there should be no gas flow coming out of your quick connect as it is a safety only to be opened when the quick connect hose is inserted. Pleasureway uses the standard quick connect, only this style of hose will attach to the quick connector on your vehicle. The propane switch is located in the utility center with the exception of the Plateau XL where you will find the propane valve situated right on the tank. All our vehicles are equipped with a carefree power awning. This is not a self-supporting awning but has legs which must be mounted to the van or mounted to the ground for proper support of your awning. The only model with a legless self-supporting awning is the Plateau XL. To extend the power awning, you will find the switches located on the passenger seat base, open the passenger side door, and trigger the switches to extend or retract your awning. In some models, the switches will be found on the kitchen end panel. First steps in extending your awning is ensure both your rear doors and the side sliding door are fully shut. Now it is safe to extend your power awning. To extend your power awning, push the out button on the driver's seat base or kitchen end panel. This will extend your awning. Extend your power awning until you can reach your leg level. At this point, for safety, unlock your leg, slide it out of the case, drop the leg to the ground, Extend your leg and lock it into place. This will allow you to extend your awning and it will also support the awning as it is going away from the vehicle.
to release the leg, pull down on the orange tab closest to the end of the awning. Once you have pulled down on the orange tab, slide the awning leg back. Ensure that you're using both hands to support the awning leg so that it does not come down on you. Drop the awning leg to the ground by sliding the orange tab down. Now at this point you can adjust the pitch of your awning. To lock your leg into position, clip the orange tab back. This will lock your leg to support your awning. You have two options to lock your leg in. You could either lock your leg back to the vehicle, slide the roller up, drop the bottom of the foot in, push it in and let the roller come down and lock the top of the foot in. Now you can adjust the pitch on your awning by sliding your awning leg up or down and locking it into place with the orange tab. Next, the awning switch inside the vehicle. You will find an off on for the LED equipped awning rail lights. Before retracting your awning, ensure the awning lights are off. To retract your awning, place your awning leg down to support your awning. Lock it into position. Now you can begin retracting your awning. This will support your awning as you retract and move it back into position. Press the in button on your awning controls. Once you've retracted your awning to a point where you can reach the awning rail, release your legs, slide them back up into the stow position, rotate the awning foot so that it is in the stow position, slide the awning leg back into the awning rail, slide the foot back into the lock, and lock your orange tab. Once the legs are in the stowed position, it is now safe to retract your awning fully into the case. If for some reason there is a power loss and you cannot retract your awning or a failure in the awning motor mechanism, you can manually retract your awning. You will not be able to extend your awning manually, but you can retract it. The tools needed for this will be a 3 8 drive socket extension as well as a 3 8 drive ratchet. This will enable you to crank your awning into position. The socket drive will go into the round opening with a square intrusion. Set your ratchet into the square retainer and this will allow you to manually crank in your awning. The Plateau XL features the carefree self-supporting legless awning. This is the second awning that we are featuring on this video. Your carefree awning features front rail lights, but these lights can also be used outside your coach with the awning retracted. This acts as an additional porch light. The carefree awning on the Plateau XL features an off-on switch. This is so that the awning does not extend while you are in motion down the road. Turn on the on switch and then push the extend button on the control panel. The awning is fully self-supporting. This awning does not have any legs that need to be tethered either back to the vehicle or posted into the ground. On your front lead rail, there is a motion sensor that will automatically start retracting the awning in windy conditions. If you're going to be away from your coach for an extended period of time, it is recommended that you retract your awning and turn the power off to your awning so that in case of a sudden wind, there will not be any damage to the awning. To retract your awning, just hit the retract button and it will automatically move to a fully closed position. You will notice that just underneath your awning is a black strip that runs the length of the coach. This black strip is actually a J channel that will take water that runs off the roof between the awning and the roof and direct it outside the awning area. For the Plateau FL or the Plateau TS equipped with the Phantom screen, the Phantom screen is stowed inside its own roller just inside the sliding door. Your Phantom screen has two locking positions slightly extended 
and fully extending. Ensure that the phantom screen locks into position both in the top and the bottom track. The phantom screen now is a flexible screen. The screen will move out of its track and then prop back into its track if something runs into the phantom screen. To retract your phantom screen, ensure that you're holding your phantom screen so that it does not spring back on you. Push the release button. Slide your phantom screen back to the desired location. It will fully retract if you continue to hold the release button. For use, make sure your tracks are clean and you can lubricate your tracks with a small amount of spray silicone, which will enable this phantom screen to slide a little bit more smoothly. Your vehicles are equipped with multiplex wiring. Your multiplex wiring is equipped with two control panels, one located in the upper kitchen area and the main control panel, which also controls the upper kitchen control panel, is the multiplex wiring panel that is located near the floor of the vehicle. The multiplex wiring load center controls all of your 12 volt appliances. It consists of mainly auto reset breakers, in the load center, if one of your 12 volt appliances is not working, check the load center chart for the fuse or auto reset breaker that corresponds with that appliance. The auto reset breaker will reset itself once it cools down. If a fuse is burnt, you will be able to see it through the clear plastic on the edge of the fuse. The multiplex wiring for your lighting, your USB ports, and for your fantastic fan the fuse panel you will find in the kitchen upper section of the vehicle. Remove the kitchen upper end panel and this will give you access to your lighting fuses, your USB fuses and your fantastic fan fuses. They are listed on the side wall of this cabinet. For all of the lighting in the vehicle you will notice that if the fuse is good there is a green light next to the fuse. If the fuse is blown it will turn to a red light. For your USB ports and your fantastic fan, you will have to check these fuses manually as they do not have a light accompanied with them. There are two important breakers that are in your vehicle. These are for the power from the converter going back to the batteries for charging, as well as the power for the generator for switching and starting. To get to these breakers, they are under a cover panel under the driver's side ottoman. What you will do is remove the cover panel using a number six screwdriver, and this will give you access to the breakers that are underneath this panel. With the screws removed, remove the cover panel. This will give you access down in behind your system. The 150 amp disconnect is for your converter going to your batteries and your batteries back to your distribution panel. When this is tripped, your batteries will not be charged from your converter. As well, if you're not plugged into electricity, your batteries will not be powering the interior of the coach. To reset the breaker, there is a little arm that swings out to the left-hand side of the breaker. Simply tuck it back into the center bar. The breaker is now reset. Also in this area is your generator breaker. If no power is going to your generator for starting, this breaker would be tripped. And to reset this breaker, it is the same procedure. Tuck the small arm back under the center bar. Down in this area as well, you will find your fuse for your solar panel. This is a typical blade style fuse, a 30 amp fuse that is hidden in this compartment. You will notice them coming off the disconnect switch with a large green wire. You will find the power system for the vehicle in the driver's side ottoman of each vehicle except for the Plateau XL. The power systems operate identical in each vehicle. However, the layout may vary due to the different sizes and available space in each coach. In the Plateau XL, to access your power converter, you will remove the top drawer underneath your entertainment center. This will give you access to the power converter, the fuses on the power converter, as well as the breaker for your generator and the breaker for your charge line from the power converter to the auxiliary batteries. The multiplex wiring load center is located above the furnace just below the drawer under the entertainment center. 
your 110 volt appliances, which include your converter, your air conditioner, your television and DVD player if plugged into 110, your fridge when it is on AC, and your microwave oven, as well as all 110 plugs in the coach, are controlled by your 110 breaker panel. This breaker panel has household breakers push in to pop the door open. This will reveal the 110 breakers. These 110 breakers control the various appliances as labeled. If one of the 110 breakers is tripped, ensure that you switch the 110 breaker fully to the off position before attempting to reset that breaker. Your multiplex wiring is controlled by two switch panels, one by the entrance of the vehicle and one located near the rear of the vehicle. The switch pad at the rear of the vehicle on the LED display indicates your tank levels, your LP tank level, as well as your battery voltage. Just below the battery voltage is your generator. This will indicate the number of hours that your generator has been on. You will see that it has an hourglass symbol right beside the gem and right below it is the hour counter. You have a labeled lighted switch panel that indicate what lights are turned on by each button. Once you press the button and turn the appliance on, the light will turn to white. If the lights are blue, this means this appliance is not in the on position. The front switch panel features the main battery disconnect. This main battery disconnect is one that you will use on a regular basis when your vehicle is just in storage for a couple days at a time. To turn off your battery disconnect, just push the off button. This will also not allow the batteries to be charged from the converter. And this battery disconnect is conveniently located just outside the side door. When you enter your coach, turn on your battery disconnect and you can turn on all of your display, your entry lights and all other portions of the vehicle. This battery disconnect controls all electronics on the 12 volt system inside the vehicle. To turn on your battery disconnect, click the on portion of the battery disconnect. You can also turn on your panel lights. Now all your panels are lit up. For night, if you do not want your panels to be lit up, you turn off your panel lights and your panel lights will go blank. For your safety, your vehicle is equipped with a GFI or ground fault plug. The ground fault plug is located either in the bathroom vanity face frame or in the kitchen lower face frame. This GFI plug controls the kitchen plugs, the bathroom plug, the outside plug, and the fridge plug. When the ground fault has been tripped, the light will appear on the ground fault plug. This indicates that there is a ground fault situation. To reset your ground fault, push the lower reset button. The light will disappear. The ground fault will trip if there is a lot of moisture contained in one of these plugs. You can have various configurations of your solar panels on your roof. If you have one panel, it will be a 95 watt panel. Two panels will give you 190 watts and three panels will give you 285 watts. Pleasureway uses the PWM-30 Go Power Solar Controller. The Go Power Solar Controller changed midway through the year and we are now on a second generation Go Power Controller. You will notice that on your first generation you have an A and a B button which will give you the same features as the new flat panel A and B button. We are now on the second generation panel and we are showing the second generation panel. The B button will allow you to switch in between readings. For example, right now our batteries are at 14.1 volts. Right now being parked inside, there is no solar charge coming from the solar panels and our battery is at 90%. Even with your batteries fully charged, your solar panel will only read 90%. To ensure your batteries are fully charged, check the voltage. You will notice that the display will be 13.5 or 13.6 volts with your batteries fully charged. When your batteries are charging, you will notice that the charge rate is between 13.6 volts and 14.7 as a maximum voltage. The Go Power Control Panel automatically regulates 
the charge that is going into your auxiliary batteries. You will also notice on this panel it says max boost. This is a 30 minute boost to take the maximum that you are getting from your solar panels and apply that to the batteries in the vehicle. The max boost button should only be used twice a day as recommended by the solar panel manufacturer. You will find with your lithium ion batteries you may only need to use the max boost button on occasion. The max boost was included in the previous model where you only have an A and a B button. Your max boost would come on if you pushed and held your B button for five seconds. The only time your batteries will read 100% on your Go Power panel is after a cycle of the max boost. If you have the first generation solar control panel, it will read 100% when the batteries are fully charged. The AC button on the solar panel is only used for an inverter system. PleasureWay does not incorporate an inverter system into their units. So the AC button will not apply to the PleasureWay system. The USB charger in your solar panel is a very low amperage charge system and it does charge off the auxiliary batteries. If you see the USB symbol on your display panel, that means the USB is active and you can use that to charge various devices. However, if the voltage drops to a certain point, that symbol will no longer appear. If you are not getting a display on your Go Power Solar Charge system, check to see that the red key disconnect is fully engaged and in the on position. Some basic maintenance for your solar system. Ensure that the panels on the roof are kept clean of dirt and free of debris as well try to park so that your solar panels are in full sun and not blocked by shading each of our coaches features an entertainment center the entertainment centers are set up very similar they all feature a tv a blu-ray player and an inverter so that you can operate your tv and blu-ray player off of the 12 volt battery system to operate your TV and Blu-ray player off of the battery system, you will notice there is an inverter, usually located in the cabinet just above or just below the TV system. To operate off the 12 volt system, remove the plugs for your TV and Blu-ray player from the wall outlet and plug them into the inverter system. There is a power switch at the opposite end of the inverter system. There is a rocker switch located next to the fan. Turn on this rocker switch and you will have 110 power to the components of your entertainment center. If you're plugged into electricity or operating off your generator, then you can unplug from your inverter and plug your plugs into the wall socket. Switch off your inverter so that the inverter will not be drawing on your batteries and you will not have the fan noise. With the plugs in the wall panel, now your system is operating off a of shore power or 110 volt. This will enable you to switch off your inverter. If your inverter appears to be on but not generating power, ensure that you check the GFI on the plug side of your inverter. The only vehicle that does not have the TV and entertainment center in the rear corner is the Plateau XL. This will have a 32 inch TV featured in mid cabin. You will find the inverters directly below the TV sitting on the shelf at that point. If you have both an interior and exterior TV, you will find two inverters. You will only find three plugs as the outside DVD player is a 12 volt DVD player. Your entertainment center is equipped with a WineGuard Razor automatic antenna. This automatic antenna features a number of benefits such as search, which will bring in your strongest signals. The WineGuard control for your TV antenna has a power button. Once this power button is on, you will notice that the antenna will immediately go to an on position. To bring in your local channels, you will hit your search. This will automatically rotate the antenna inside the enclosed case to bring in the best reception possible for your area. Once your antenna is finished searching, you can fine tune by rotating your antenna slightly by using the manual buttons located at the bottom. You will notice that there is an additional 
coax cable plug at the bottom of your antenna. This is actually for an additional television if you choose to run a separate set. To check the temperature inside your coach, you can just simply hit the plus or the minus button. It will give you the temperature that you are currently inside your coach. To operate your thermostat, your thermostat operates the fan on the air conditioning, your cool on your air conditioning, and also your furnace. With your fan set on auto mode, now you can move down to your cooling, which is your air conditioner mode. You will choose your temperature, and with the fan on auto, it will automatically adjust your air conditioner for your fan speed. You will select the temperature that you would like your coach to be at. Your air conditioner will run to that point, at which time it will kick off the compressor. The fan will continue to run at that point as well. For the furnace mode, you want your fans set to automatic and move down to your furnace mode. On your furnace mode, again, by adjusting your positive or your negative, you can adjust your temperature up and down to the desired setting in the vehicle. With your furnace, you will notice that the fan will come on first on the furnace. It will run for a short period of time and then you will hear your propane engage. The furnace flame will come on. It will blow heat until it reaches the desired temperature. The flame will go out and then the furnace fan will continue to run for a short period of time to clear the tubes. To operate your furnace, you have to ensure that you have propane on board and that the propane valve is in the on position. Your furnace operates and will only heat if the propane is engaged. For your air conditioner, your air conditioner needs either the generator operating or plugged into a 30 amp power source to engage the air conditioner. Your air conditioner is strictly a 110 appliance. All Pleasure Wave vans are equipped with three-way fridges. The Plateau TS is equipped with a Norco 6 cubic foot, two-door, three-way fridge. This fridge can operate off 110, it can operate off the 12 volt DC, or it can operate off propane. The 110 feature of the fridge is controlled by the GFI that we will find located either in the kitchen or in the bathroom of your vehicle. It is recommended that when you're traveling down the road or when the vehicle is in motion that your fridge be set to the DC mode, the propane be switched off, and that the operation is through the DC mode. To ensure that your fridge is on DC, you can select the mode by using the mode button or select the mode DC by using the dial on the fridge is equipped with the dial. The Plateau XL as well as the Plateau FL and the Ascent feature the Domatic three-way fridge. Each of these fridges operates in the same manner. They open by pressing down the end panel and this will allow the fridge door to unlock and open. The pneumatic fridge in each of these models is a three-way fridge. You can manually choose your mode. The automatic setting will choose the best power source for your refrigerator, whether that be AC, propane, or battery. You will notice the plug-in represents your AC, the flame represents your propane, and the battery emblem represents the 12 volt. It is recommended that when the vehicle is in motion that you do not run your fridge on propane and your propane is in the off position. It is recommended to be on battery power while the vehicle is in motion. You will also notice that you've got temperature settings on your fridge. This will vary depending on your weather situation. In most cases you want to use a medium temperature setting. This is the third fridge in our fridge lineup. This fridge is in the Promaster Lexer. It is a five cubic foot fridge. It is the RM8330 Domatic three-way refrigerator. This is the only fridge in our fleet that is a manual setting refrigerator and a manual light refrigerator. You will notice that this features three settings, 110, 12 volt, and propane. Go to your 110, turn it to the power setting that looks like the plug-in. For battery or DC, 12 volt, you go to the one that looks like a battery. And for propane, you go to the one that looks like a flame. To light the propane, 
push in on the temperature knob, hold it for a couple seconds, then strike with the striker. Once the flame is engaged, you will notice the red arrow will move into the green. Once the red arrow is in the green, hold for a couple seconds, then release, and the arrow should stay in the green. If it does not, shut everything off and retry. You will also notice that this dial is the temperature setting for your fridge. Usually a medium temperature is desired. Depending on the outside temperature, you may have to adjust your fridge temperature to be either cooler or warmer. To light it on propane, ensure that the propane switch is on on the outside of your coach and ensure there is propane in the tank. This wraps up the orientation of the 2016 Pleasure Way Coaches. The intent of this video was to get you comfortable with your 2016 Pleasure Way vehicle. Please read through the operation manuals of each individual appliance as well as the vehicle operation manual. Thank you for watching this video.